Good morning everyone and welcome to my channel. Today is Wednesday and it is super rainy outside today. It's supposed to rain all day long, so sorry the lighting in here is yellow. So I feel like I might look a little bit yellow right now because I don't have natural light, but we are vlogging today. It's just a rainy day, lazy day at home. Olivia has speech therapy at two o'clock, which is all virtual, so we don't have to go anywhere. I'm actually still in my PJs. Olivia's mess on the floor that I need to clean up, but I'm still in my pajamas. I did manage to get my makeup on somehow, and Olivia is dressed. She is in her room. She, I don't know what she's doing in there. I'll show y'all show her. She, like, I opened the door. So she got a nightlight, and she's obsessed with it. I opened the door. Turn the light on and she closes the door. Like she does not want me in there. You want the light off? Let me turn it off. She loves her nightlight. She's like so obsessed with trying it out. Okay. Coming in. Are you playing? Are you playing with your bear? Sheep? Yeah. Bah. bah, that's right. No. No. Sheep. No. Susie. Yeah, there's Susie. Mm-hmm. That's right. You gonna pet her gently? No. No. Dog. Olivia's in her comfy sweatsuit today. It's a little bit big, but it's so cute that I couldn't resist putting her in it, especially because it's just so dreary outside today. Olivia has allowed me to be in her bedroom and I've gotten a lot of questions about her speech therapy So I just want to address that really quickly Hopefully she will let me she's kind of occupied playing with her closet doors right now So sorry if you hear that in the background, but I just want to talk to you guys about why we started therapy and What we're doing to help her speak so she will be two in three weeks And I guess when she was about I'm sorry for the noise. I guess when she was about Oh my gosh, it might have been three or four months ago. So like 18 to 20 months. I would say we noticed that she had no words. Like she was not talking at all. Uh oh, did you mash your finger? Come here. You okay? She just wasn't using her words or using any language. And it was kind of frustrating for us as parents because we didn't know what she needed or what she wanted. And it was frustrating for her as well because she couldn't communicate with us what she needed and wanted. So we figured it was time for some intervention. I was way more concerned about it than my husband was. He was really calm about it and just said, you know, she'll talk when she is ready to talk. But I just wanted to make sure there were no sensory issues going on or anything there that we needed to get help with. So after we got her evaluated, she did end up qualifying for speech therapy, which I knew she would because she doesn't have any words. And I just want to add this in here real quick. We have to remember as moms, like we're living in the middle of a pandemic right now and our kids are not getting interaction like they normally would from outside interaction. Like they're not going to daycare. Some kids they are not around any other children. Like I wanted to put Olivia in kinder music. I also wanted to take her to mother's morning out a few times a week, but we cannot do any of that now mainly because of personal preference because i'm pregnant but also just because we're living in a pandemic and we're doing everything we can to protect our family right now because i am pregnant so keep that in mind if you're a mom i blame myself a lot sometimes i still do i feel really guilty like maybe it's something i did wrong but just keep in mind that times are strange right now and we're just all doing the best that we can and with olivia too um her therapy is all online. She needs my help, so I'm gonna go with her because she's pulling me. What do you need, Olivia? Hold on one second, let me see what she needs. What do you need? Can you show me? Show me. You want your puzzle? Here you go. Okay, here you go. All right. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, sorry about that. Olivia needed me to get something down from her closet. But her therapy is all virtual and I kind of had a little bit of concern when it came to that just because I didn't know if she would interact well with her therapist, but she totally does. I do think it's very different, obviously, than one-on-one -on -one play therapy. 
at times, actually 90% of the time, I feel like I'm the therapist. I am a very nervous, anxious mom. I do a ton of research. I'm very aware of things that are going on um, with Olivia and I research it. And I realized that there were some things that we were doing at home that we either needed to stop doing or things that we needed to incorporate more of to encourage her language development. And one of those things I just want to share with y'all in case y'all are kind of going through the same thing with your kids, maybe not speaking and you're a little bit concerned. Um, I would definitely get them evaluated and get them in therapy if you feel like that's something that they need. But I just want to share with y'all these things that we've incorporated that we've seen a huge difference in Olivia just by incorporating them. So the first one is TV. I, at, when Olivia was little, I told myself like, I'm not gonna let her watch TV. Um, you know, we're not gonna do screen time and all this stuff. And then it just kind of happened. We just started doing screen time and it got to the point where we kept it on pretty much all day, mainly as background noise for me. But after reading a ton of information, I realized that the TV can be very, very distracting to them and can delay their speech. You can definitely do your own research about that, but we have reduced screen time to maximum 30 minutes a day. Sometimes it's less than that. And I immediately saw a huge difference in her attention and her language development. The second thing we did is that I started playing with her more. I feel guilty even like saying this out loud, but I feel like as moms, we all do it. You know, you start doing the dishes and you get caught up with the laundry and you just kind of let your kid play by themselves. Now, with every kid is different, but in Olivia's case, she needs me to, she needs that one-on-one -on -one play. And especially for her language, I've noticed she needs a lot of it, which is totally fine for me because I've realize the laundry will be there when she goes to bed. The dishes will be there when she goes to bed. Like I can do all of that later in the day, but right now my priority is playing with her. I'm someone who gets really anxious when my house is a mess. So it causes a lot of anxiety for me to just like sit down and focus on playing with her when I have this huge mess around me, but I'm getting a lot better at that and just giving her intentional time. And now that we've kind of gotten into a routine with it, just spending one hour of undivided attention with her a day has helped so much. Like in the morning, I will just focus on her and only her. I don't worry about my hair being done or my makeup or anything like that. I just focus on her. And it's just been so beneficial for her and me. Another thing we did is we bought interactive toys. This is just like a example we got this 100 first words book and she likes this one because the flaps open up and olivia has like an attention i wouldn't say it's a problem but she has a hard time like holding her attention for a long period of time like two or three minutes is normally her max but i found with toys like this that are interactive she'll sit and play with for sometimes 10 minutes so if your child has a problem like sitting down and just really focusing on things Definitely get interactive toys. I will link some of our favorites down below. We got um, flashcards for her, like with animals on them. She loves those. Her therapist has puppets, which Olivia loves. It just helps her stay engaged. And she's learned a lot from those puppets. She's learned like body parts on the, their animal puppets. And she's learned where their eyes and their nose and the sounds they make. She loves those things. And I think that that's really about, oh, sign language. That's one thing that we're doing a lot of. I don't really know the science behind that. Um, sometimes I think like, why am I teaching her all of this sign language when I want her to speak to me? But I will tell you, her being able to sign has helped us tremendously just with communication and understanding what she needs and wants. Like now she can sign help, she can sign more, she can sign all done and apple she can do apple there's quite a few that she can do and it's just really helpful for us when it comes to communication we're both definitely a lot less aggravated so that's really everything i needed to share or wanted to share if you guys have any questions about speech therapy you want to know anything else just feel free to ask me down below because i felt lost when it came to this my brothers were in therapy so i had my mom to talk to about it but that was also 
like 10 years ago so things have changed a lot since then so if you have any questions about it definitely let me know i'd be glad to answer those for you i don't know where she is she just oh she's in her chair and i'm pretty sure she's reading she's in her chair reading a book um but yeah also sorry it's like dark in here but the tv turning it off has helped her stay engaged and like play more and i was really concerned about her play because she didn't seem to engage with us very much she didn't seem to play a whole lot but after doing some research and like talking to her therapist we realized that the tv can cause a lot of issues in children especially if it's on all day and they have the option to watch tv of course they're not going to play with their toys of course they're going to watch tv because it's a distraction to them and we've seen a huge difference in just her attention and how she plays she plays so much better just with us and independent play without the tv on so that's everything i have to say about that i feel like it was kind of rambly and I'm sorry if it was too rambly, but I have a lot to say about the topic and I definitely want to share it with you guys in case you're going through the same thing because as moms, we can be so hard on ourselves and just beat ourselves up over it, but you're doing the best you can and that is all that matters. Breakfast is no longer my own. I always have a little girl who wants to eat my breakfast. Is that good, Olivia? Mmm. You like eggs? Mommy does too. Yeah, they're good, huh? Yep. Do you want an apple? Yeah. That's how she sounds, apple. You want an apple? Apple? Let's go get one. Apple. This All is right. the problem with rainy days. Olivia puts her shoes on and wants to go O-U-T. And we can't because it's raining. It's raining. Take them off now. Good idea. Do you need help? Okay. There you go. Okay, we are on our way to, you guessed it, Chick-fil-A. I swear in every single vlog, like, I, it's not intentional, it's just, I guess that shows you how much I go there. But we're going to Chick-fil-A because I want a Coke so bad and I love Chick-fil-A's Coke. I don't know what it is about their Coke. I think it's the best. I think it's better than McDonald's. I know some people like swear by McDonald's Coke, but Chick-fil-A's Coke. I need one. Also, I never drank like sodas pre-pregnancy ever. Like extremely rare for me. But all of a sudden being pregnant, like I want soda all the time. See Olivia's feet back there. And milkshakes and I googled it and it says that your calcium can be low so I'm wondering if my calcium is low I have no idea I'm also debating on getting a grilled chicken sandwich and a cookie <laughs> have not decided yet <sighs> chick-fil-a gets me every time I swear I have a little update for you guys I did not get a sandwich but I got my cookie got my coke here mmm give me a hiccup and I got Olivia a french fry, so we are good to go. We're gonna go home now. I'm gonna eat my cookie in the car. Y'all know I can't wait. And then it's gonna be nap time. All right, let's take a nap. Where's your car? Where's your
Olivia's down for her nap. And I am gonna go do my hair, finally. Like, it's so bad, it needs to be fixed. So, I'm gonna go do that now and hope I don't wake her up because the bathroom is like right behind her bedroom. So, fingers crossed. Shooting me with words, but I will let them bruise. Even though it hurts, I won't show it to you. Cause it will ricochet, I won't let it bite. I will look at you and tell you that I'm alright. Like a ricochet, it will come back to you. Let me tell you, not because my heart is open, your words will keep bouncing away. Alright, I got my hair done. Olivia's asleep. I'm like checking to make sure I'm not waking her up by talking. She sleeps for about an hour and she fell asleep probably five minutes ago. So I'm gonna hurry up and get my house tidied up. Um, Mike and I have decided that <laughs> we are clean, like we're clean people, but we're definitely not tidy people. And it's something that I'm trying to work on because it creates more chaos and more anxiety and like just more stuff for me to do during the day. Like for example, those animal crackers back there. Like Olivia was eating those for a snack and I didn't put them away when she was done with them. I used the salt this morning. I did not put it away. Just like stuff like that. Like when I get things out, I never put them away and Mike is the same exact way. So during nap time, basically I just go around and pick up all the things that I didn't get picked up in that moment so I'm trying to get better at that and like be more mindful of it let me know if y'all are like that I don't know why we're like that like I know some people who just pick it up right away and their home is like tidy and clean all the time I strive to be one of those people because when there's like a mess around me I feel so anxious inside like it sends me down like a spiral like I try to explain it to Mike it doesn't bother him at all but I tried to explain it to him and tell him like when the house when there's stuff everywhere my mind gets so cluttered too it's like it goes in a million different directions and I'm thinking about all the things I have to get done whereas if my house is picked up it's just so much better I have such a better day so we're both gonna try to do better with that I've got dishes to do I've got to make my bed all the things Y'all know the nap time hustle, I'm sure. So let's go ahead and get this clean. Sorry for the lighting my room has like a yellow light so it's gonna look kind of yellow in here because it's a gloomy day outside but I had to take a break from cleaning as you can see like my bedroom needs to be cleaned but I'm listening to this podcast called social media ruined my life by Trent Shelton I found him through Rachel Hollis and his stuff is so good um, but the reason why I want to talk to you guys about this is because I recently deleted social media, I think almost a month ago now. I deleted it from my cell phone because I'm reading this book. I'm going to grab it so I can show you guys. But it's called Rhythms of Renewal. Um, my mom got this for me. I'm out of breath. Sorry. My mom got this for me and I'm so thankful that she did. If you're not religious, you might not enjoy this book but it's called rhythms of renewal trading stress and tra trading stress and anxiety for a life of peace and purpose and she talks about deleting social media 
and I felt really led to delete it for a lot of different reasons, but the main one being that I was using it to cope, which is totally fine for some people. This is just personal, a personal experience that I had. I was using it, I was scrolling when Olivia was throwing a temper tantrum, I was scrolling when she was playing instead of being engaged with her. I was worried about who was doing what all the time. I didn't want to miss any lives, didn't want to miss anybody's stories. I was just so caught up in social media. And this podcast also really hit home for me because he said, I'm going to try to get the words right. I'm probably going to mess it up a little bit. But the basic outline of what he talked about was social media and how it, it impacts you. And he's asked the question, when's the last time you were just you basically? Like when's the last time you didn't worry about what other people thought about you or you didn't post something for the likes or when's the last time you just felt like your true authentic self and social media does that to us it has this way of like making us number one compare ourselves constantly to other people it makes us not show up in the way that we feel led to show up because we're comparing ourselves to other people or we think people are going to judge us that we're not good enough all types of different sorts of things going on there i had plenty of people message me and say Megan, I really want to start a YouTube channel, but I'm scared because I live in a small town and people are going to judge me. And Or Megan, like, how did you start your channel? Were you scared of what people thought about you? And of course I was. I'm still, like, I still cringe at the thoughts of, like, people in my hometown watching me or even sometimes my family watching me. But if you feel led to do something, just show up as yourself. Like, just do it. Just do the things that you want to do. Stop stop focusing on what everyone else thinks about you so i encourage you to listen to that podcast and here it is i don't know if you guys can see it because of the lighting but i encourage you to listen to the podcast and see if you can delete social media for 30 days especially during the election because people get cray this time of year on social media and it can be really detrimental for our mental health so that's my rant for the day I'm sorry this vlog is like, I feel like I've ranted so much, but I have not vlogged like this in a long time. And like I said, I just love sharing my life with y'all, so I'm just sharing all the things today. Yeah, I'm awake, Tootsie. I missed you. Tell her. Did you miss her? Pet her, Olivia. Pet Tootsie. Oh, sweet. Tootsie missed you. Olivia's therapy starts in like 10 minutes. I'm trying to eat my lunch. It's a tuna fish sandwich. Susie, stop. Susie, stop. Olivia insisted on eating her lunch on the floor today. I mean, some days, like, I just don't have the energy to, like, fight with her about it. And she's a kid. Like, she wants to eat on the floor. I'm not going to force her to sit in her high chair. But the, the problem is, is that the dogs eat her food. So, uh-oh, did you drop it? Here, let me give you some more. So, it's just like... <laughs> The dogs eat her food, but she wants to eat on the floor and she tells them to stop and it's like this big, this big thing. So we're doing the best we can before therapy. We're eating some snacks and some lunch. Then we have therapy for an hour and we're excited, huh? Are you ready for therapy? Yep. All right, so I'm in the middle of making dinner right now and I just wanna show y'all what it is and how I do it. So that's chicken pot pie. I'm getting ready to put the top on. But I wanted to just like share with y'all how I did it because it's super easy. All right, so about this chicken pot pie, I have you guys sitting in my uh, yes. spice cabinet right now. But I wanted to show y'all or tell y'all how I did it. So I just get two pie crusts, just like store bought pre made pie crusts, 
and I get two can two big cans of veg all and two pounds of chicken. I cook my chicken in the instant pot with a little bit of chicken broth for 12 minutes. And once that's done, I shred it, mix it with the two cans of veg all, and then I put the pie crust in my pie pan. In this case, I'm using a cast iron. Pour the veg all mixture in. I sprinkle butter and flour on top. Just kind of, I just eyeball it. Salt and pepper, and then I pour like a half a cup of chicken broth into the cast iron. And now I'm getting ready to put the top layer of pie crust on top. I'm gonna bake that at 350 for an hour. I watched my grandmother, my nanny, make chicken pot pie for years. And I just kind of watched her do it and um, just made it my own way now that I'm, you know, living on my own and stuff. I just kind of did it my own way. So that's what I do. It tastes so good. We make a gravy to put on top of it. It's a very easy and quick weeknight dinner. It comes together super quick and it's also cheap to make too. And we always have leftovers. So you should definitely try it out. It's right, so good. My pie is done and ready to go in the oven. Definitely not a professional like pie maker. As you can see, the crust needs some work, but it's gonna taste good and that's all that all right. matters. This is the reality of cooking. My kitchen is a disaster and I'm not gonna clean it up right now because Olivia really needs my attention right now and I know that this mess will be here when she goes to bed. So I'm not gonna fret about it. And I'm gonna go over here, look at the dishes. I'm gonna go over here and play with this little munchkin. Are you cooking? Yeah. Yep. You cooking some dinner too? What are you gonna make? Ooh, an egg. That looks pretty good. So excited because we just realized that Dad is home early. You gonna go get him? Dad? He's gonna be coming in in just a minute. Yep. Mike actually, I had to put my hair up. I cannot handle it down anymore. Mike actually has a sleep study tonight. So he's not gonna be here with us. He normally gets home around six, but it's 4.50 right now. So he, I guess, came home early to spend time with us. We're so happy. And he has to leave here, I think at 7.30 to go to his sleep study. So we're definitely excited to have more time with him tonight. Olivia, are you excited dad's home? Where is he? Dad. Yeah, he's gonna be here. He's gonna be coming in. I'm getting ready to go ahead and take a shower. Mike is playing with Olivia right now. He's gotta leave for a sleep study in an hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and get ready for bed and all of that before he leaves. And I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog now. I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe down below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.